Should you buy one of these microphone isolation shields? I don't know, maybe you're looking at an affordable studio setup for some voice work, or perhaps you just need to block out an annoying sound coming from the fridge. <gasps> Is this thing worth it? They come in all shapes and sizes, even like a ball, like the chaotic eyeball. But do they work? And if so, why doesn't everyone own one? Well, there's some good and bad here. So let's break down the isolation shield and what it might mean for your setup. So the concept of these is pretty simple, right? You put your microphone in and voila, you have a small little studio sounding area where your voice is controlled. Now, as I mentioned before, they come in all shapes and sizes, though pricing is all around the same amount in one to $200 range. The most popular would probably be the Chaotica Eyeball, which sits in at the higher end of that pricing. They all work the same way by damming up your voice so it can't escape and run rampant across your untreated room and getting back into the microphone. But they can also work as a literal shield against other unwanted sound getting into your mic. But if they do all that, why doesn't everyone own one? Because all that just sounds great. Well, there are a few reasons. And to explore those reasons, we're going to need some extreme testing. So we're going to rely on Kitchen Aiden. So here we have the NT1 inside the isolation shield. In the worst case scenario possible, this is my kitchen. Now, obviously, as I'm talking like this, you can hear my voice all over the place. But when I get into the box, you're going to notice at a normal speaking level, you can still hear my voice reverberating around the room. Now you see, most microphones like this one gather sound from all directions, whether you like it or not. Now on most cardioid microphones, you will notice the clearest sound comes from the sources in front of the mic. That said, as you move around the mic, it's still picking up variable levels of sound depending on where you are on the microphone capsule. So inevitably, this shield ends up blocking all sound leaking into your audio from one of these off axis positions. That is both good and bad. For one, those sounds are bad and you don't want them. But the other side of that argument is the inherent boxiness that you run into when you decide to deaden all those extra frequencies that your mic is used to picking up. But the biggest issue is right in front of you. Remember, the front of the microphone is the intended side of the mic for picking up sound. And wouldn't you know it? That's the one side of the mic that's not protected by the shield. So any sound coming from behind me is fair game. Now I can hear you asking, Aiden, doesn't the shield also block your voice and in turn stop reverb? Well, not completely, as you can hear behind me. Now, depending on the read you're going for, you will have drastically different results. For example, a close-up and intimate microphone experience will give you a different experience than if you're talking at a normal speaking level. And if you're doing a hard read like this, you're going to have extra problems. Why is that? Shouldn't this shield completely stop your voice? Well, not really. You see, the sound that comes out of your face hole doesn't come out in a straight line. In fact, it comes out at all angles, which is why you can mic yourself with a shotgun mic from above, which means while you're still getting rid of your voice going directly forward and somewhat off to the side, all this other voice is escaping and jumping off the walls and getting back into your mic. But then does this mean these things are trash and don't have any use? Well. Let's talk about that. Let's go back to basement Aiden for that one. So that was an obviously worst case scenario for the purpose of demonstration, but there's good reason for it. This thing is not a studio in a box. It won't ever completely take the place of a properly treated space and buying one expecting that will always lead to disappointment. So then what? is the point of it. Well, it is a rather inelegant solution for those of us who have some semblance of treatment on the walls. Even a studio like this one is far from perfect and won't be able to perfectly isolate my voice. But something like this would allow me to record without worry as long as the space behind me is treated. This goes for anyone. Something, anything on the walls behind you will severely limit the amount of reverb getting back into the mic. Curtains, bookshelves, whatever you have. Now, of course, there is the perfect situation that this thing can offer a solution, most notably with sound rejection from other sources than your voice, specifically things that are leaking into your recording. I'm talking fridge noises, computer sounds, street noise, HVAC, the list is endless. 
One of the great things about this is it literally takes the off-axis rejection of your mic and cranks it to 100. And of course, if you make sure the area behind you is treated as well, you may very well have the perfect solution. I will have a few of these linked down below if you want to give one a shot. Or if you're really hardcore and you need the absolute best solution for isolated recording, even in a completely untreated environment, check out this video on the Isovox 2. Cheers.